This week on AwesomeCast, Jarvis comes to your iPhone, we prep for iOS 7, and just how much are us cord cutters spending on TV. All this and more, AwesomeCast. This edition of AwesomeCast is brought to you by PittsburghOnVideo.org. Check out the best videos from Pittsburgh all in one place, PittsburghOnVideo.org. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. I'm getting awesome. You're getting awesome. We're getting awesome. Yeah, that's what I said now. Guys, it's time to get geeky again. It's an awesome cast 167. Ready to talk tech, talk geekiness, talk online stuff. Uh, back in the studio with me once more is John Chichilla after his week off celebrating. What was your birthday? It, it was your... my anniversary. Anniversary. <laughs> some happy occasion of some sort, I'm sure. Yes. Uh, so how you how you doing, sir? No, not too bad. Not too bad at all. Now, how distracting was the new announcement around all your plan making last? It, it wasn't bad because I, I did take a half day and Carla was working. That's good. So I was able to consume mass amounts of data uninterrupted good. and then like had, a, had time in the evening or late afternoon evening. So you got to digest for, for the festivities and then move on. That's tremendous. It's perfect. There was, there was a lot of tweeting going on. I'll tell you that. Yep. Uh, I'll be interested to see. I mean,. <clears throat> Let's see what Friday brings. <laughs> see what Friday. See what we get into hand. So you're gonna. Well, we'll get. Actually, we'll get into that in a moment. Uh, first, of course, this is the awesome cast. We are at sorgatronmedia.com. You can drop us an email at contact at awesomecast.com uh, to let us know of what you agree, disagree with, what things you think we should talk about on the show that you think are awesome. If you have an awesome thing of the week, share it with us and we'd like to talk about it too. Or you can join us in the chat room at live.sorgatronmedia.com about 6.30 p.m. Eastern time every Tuesday night. Um, and of course, we're on Google+, Plus, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, at AwesomeCast on Twitter. Go check out all that stuff. We're on there. Uh, uh, hit us up on things you're liking uh, so we can share that with everybody and hopefully discuss it on the show as well so let's get into it first hey we got some fan interactives fan interactive actions crew interactions whatever you want to call it uh but you know as usually happens i end up I, you know i do google hangout every monday night with the guys uh for uh for monday night raw right and a lot of time i wrestling really really the wrestling discussions and watching bleeds over into every ge other geek thing that we've been into comic books comedy uh technology and stuff like that and usually aj will keep me up pretty late talking about tech <laughs> uh so we were talking about i was like yo dude he has some thoughts in, in about what we talked about last week on the show mm -hmm. uh about the phones and uh we'll get into a little bit later in the show he actually has because he's been running beta like you have um and he's got some thoughts on it a little bit of a primer uh, because, you know, I, I, you know, this is going to be the first that I'm going to lay hands on it, you know, at, at any extended period of time. A lot of people is going to be like, what the heck happened to my phone? And us geeks have to be prepared for the deluge of, of what's coming when our moms and grandmas and in-laws and everybody. What's up? See, I, I, I'm interested in that. And I want to see what AJ has to say, because there's one interesting thing that if you peel back the layers of transparent, flattened gooey... <laughs> There's one thing. <laughs> All the gooey. <laughs> Ew. It, 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 there's an interesting scenario that plays out, but I want to hear what right, AJ we'll, has we'll to say. We'll test on that. So, so. This, first, this is his take on uh, the phones themselves. Okay. Hey, uh, just listen to Awesome Cast, uh, the previous episode where we talked about the iPhone 5C and 5S announcements along with iOS 7. Uh, coming up later, uh, we have a, uh, an actual iOS 7 review where I go through it on my phone. Um, but I just wanted to jump in with some things uh, real quick about the 5C. Uh, it is the same phone, but honestly, does it really matter? I, I have a feeling that people don't care so long as their apps work. And the 5 is still smoother than butter with iOS 7. I, I don't see anything that requires any sort of increase in hardware. Uh, they did add LTE bands, so there's more frequencies to the chip, so there's one model. There isn't an AT&T and a Verizon model, there's just one model. Uh, they're going to sell a ton of them, and I want a blue one. I would actually switch to the C from the uh, whatever the S model is. It's not a real big deal to me. Um, the iPhone 5S, I wouldn't worry about machetes. Uh, the actual sensor that goes around the home button uh, is a sensor that actually turns on the fingerprint sensor. So you have to have a living finger. And uh, 
it doesn't use the tip, the actual surface fingerprint. It actually uses a sub-layer fingerprint in order to get it, uh, which is kind of crazy to think about uh, because I've never really thought about the layers of my thumb. Uh, the 64-bit CPU is cool. Uh, I'm not not until apps jump on board until and until apps say yes, it really does run better with the 64-bit app. The camera, the new camera is cool, but the five camera is still perfectly fine. I take I've taken 2,000 pictures of my kid with it. It's pretty good. Um, so that's it. Uh, enjoy the rest of the show. Just wanted to to throw, toss my thoughts in there. Thanks. Uh, the one thing I mean, I don't want to go back through the whole phone and what it has and what it doesn't have. There's one interesting fact, and I actually didn't learn this until uh, probably a couple months ago. So, one of the things that I or that Apple touts is the fact that they encrypt all of their data at rest. Your data is safe on their device. Yuck, yuck, blah, blah. Well, yuck, yuck. It, <laughs> it's it, it's an interesting theory. So, your data is encrypted, and it's encrypted at rest. It does not have the level of encryption without a password on the device. So by putting a password on the device, you have additional encryption where, and let's just put it like this. So I have, I have an iPhone, I plug it into, and it doesn't have a password on it. I plug it into a computer. My device loads up all the photos on my device. Mm -hmm. I have a password on my device. It can't load any of those photos until you type in the password on the device. And then it comes up as a camera. Okay. So, that's kind of kind of shows the layers of encryption they grow and the the additional or the keys are based on that password. So now with the fingerprint sensor, I can put in a 12 character alphanumeric special character password and more than likely I'm never going to have to type it in unless the device is rebooted or I haven't typed in, I haven't authenticated to the device within 48 hours. Mm -hmm. So to me, the fingerprint sensor is huge from a security perspective. And I, and I don't want to go down a huge security thing or, or the capabilities of the phone. I mean, we all know it's coming out. We, we've reviewed what's in it, what's, it, what's in included. But I think that fingerprint sensor from a security perspective is above and beyond anything that anyone else is doing in the market as far as security. I mean, I don't know what your your take on it is. Um, I just <clears throat> look forward to just being able to use my finger to turn the phone on instead of that stupid passcode. Um, and, and 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 again, you know, going back the the whole separate fingers idea. Um, great. Now they're just going to give you on keep you on life support. <laughs> so chloroform. Sorry, we were talking a lot about saw and insidious and everything in the last podcast. So I'm kind of in that mind. Uh, set now, uh, so well you could pump live blood through a thumb, warm blood, and then push the thumb. Definitely against. makes things a little complicated. Hey, if they'll steal your kidneys, why not, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, <laughs> let's get into our awesome things of the week, and we'll touch more back on iOS here. We'll spread it out a little bit. Uh, so uh, my awesome thing of the week actually uh, came to me uh, uh, via the Google Plus. And it was actually uh, by showing a version that they can't do. Uh, there is a company called Gpop, or at least that's what their website is here, <clears throat> excuse me, that they will stylize your Google Glass. So adding texture, carbon fiber, make your glass pop. There's some, uh, some anime series stuff they're doing here. Uh, some typography stuff. There is a a fighter shooting a fireball. Obviously, we're not going to say straight up that it is a street fighter, but uh, I, this is this is interesting. So I, I, I presume this is one of those things where there are stickers and you kind of uh, apply it yourself, which that always goes well for me because uh, my hands are completely. You know, there's an apple. <laughs> there you go. An old school apple <laughs> that you can put on the side of your Google Glass. I'm actually wow. These are kind of cool. I actually kind of sort of want to do one of these. Um, San Francisco 49ers. Uh, I wonder if they have any other. Oh, coming soon. They're going to do NCAA, NFL, NBA, MLB. You, you need the YOLO one. The go, YOLO go, one? YOLO. YOLO. Only live once. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Well, where is it? Well, there it is. Oh, with the colors and there everything. There it is. Like, you know, YOLO. Uh, That's what all the kids are going to be getting. Yep. 
and everybody they just became explorer. You only live once. Plunk it down, right? Uh, so yeah, it's it's pretty cool that there's already this mini industry. Which I mean, I don't know how well these guys are doing because I mean, you know how how many explorers are there out there? Like you know, last number I heard was like eight thousand. So so lower left. Hmm. Is that gold or is that wood grain? Where we go at? all the way to the bottom. All for, the for, bottom. for you at home, we're looking at their web page. We're checking this, this out. No, that's the American flag to the left. Abstract light dots. It's, it's just uh, a sticker. They need gold. They need gold. They need gold. I, I think if anyone's okay. proven in the last week and a half, gold <laughs> still, rolls the world. I'm still iffy on this whole gold idea. I think what? it looks <clears throat> iffy at I, best. But you know? HTC One's doing it too. Uh, Why? And the, here, wait. The the one they're they're claiming the one iPhone C that sold out mm-hmm. overseas, yellow, close mm-hmm. to gold. <laughs> I'm not buying gold, but I I, I I think it's interesting how everyone's jumping on that. I want to see how many gold iPhones I'm going to see like in the wild. Now, if you if if the gold iPhone came with on the black device, mm-hmm. you know everyone in Pittsburgh would buy it. But there it's on go. it's gold on white. There you go. Mm. Yeah, not so much. My sister actually emailed me. She she's buying the gold device. I'm like, really? <laughs> really? Okay, whatever. But I don't know. It was, it was kind of something quick and cool and, and just making me really long for my glass to come back here since I RMA, RMA did it last year, Still last week. Cool. It feels like last year. It feels, yeah, it feels like last year. Yeah, I'm getting really bad. I, I, I tweeted, yeah, I don't know if you saw, I tweeted yesterday. I was sitting there at, at my one job um, and, and, and I heard a Facebook thing and I did the nod. There's nothing on There's your face. There's nothing on my face. <laughs> I've done that. I've done, you know, standing in a line and wanting to check the time. I do the nod, you know, nothing's in front of my face. Now, so I've, been, I've been wearing my thicker glasses because it's been so long since I wore them, since I can't wear them with glass. But then I have something heavier on my face because these are thicker rims. And I keep thinking there's something else on my face. But it's not glass. Yeah, it's not glass. You should make a wrap. It's not glass. I, I could. I should. Should LB if you're out there, we, we need to talk about that project, right? Um, so what do you have this week? So, um, Iron, we, we talked a couple shows ago, Iron Man was released earlier. We were talking about pre release movies. Um, mm-hmm. interestingly enough, to tag along with Iron Man coming out on Blu ray, Marvel has teamed up with Apple for an exclusive Jarvis application. Ooh. And importing all preferences from home interface. So it's actually interesting. Systems check. So the app actually starts out. You set it up. And I'm going to go through this real quick. Setup complete. I'm displaying a set of rudimentary commands currently available. It's not the most comprehensive list, but it will have to suffice. In the future, if you ever need a list of commands, please say Jarvis commands or tap the commands icon. So, so they went through and pretty much built their own little Siri around Jarvis from Iron Man. Waiting instructions. The time is now 6.52 p.m. Is this the one I've seen that is supposed to like interface with the Blu-ray and all so, that kind yeah, of stuff? Yeah, and it's going to offer a second screen interface. So is this one right here? It's yes. free, so I can download this thing. You can download that thing. So I'm going to go. And it does a lot without having the video. I mean, the video, you can do a lot with it. You have to have a Blu-ray. You have to have a Blu-ray player that's on the same Wi-Fi network as your phone. Um, but they've even, let me see if I. Sir, it is Tuesday. So he's going to get through September what time it is. 17th. The current temperature. temperature is now 67 degrees Fahrenheit. My scans indicate clear and sunny skies today. Have a wonderful day. You have no pressing events. Have a peaceful evening. Now, now he's kind of like Siri. If you keep pestering I hope him. one is not pressing this button simply for one's own amusement. Is there anything I can help you with? Now, if, if you is annoy him enough. Humor? I have terabytes of calculations to run. I'm very busy trying to keep you on schedule. Since you appear set on getting my attention, you have it. This game is growing old. I'm one of the most powerful computing. I'm very busy. So now he's turning red. With this light of action. Activating security protocol self-destruct sequence. <laughs> uh, the phone actually looks like it's erasing itself. And the light, it flashes the, the camera. I mean, it's... <laughs> and the screen goes blank. 
Like you're in the app, it's black. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. That's amazing. <laughs> so, so it's a pretty neat little app. Um, you can actually post to Facebook from it. It actually has Jarvis ringtones that it'll mm-hmm. import. Um, it ends up emailing to. Them I'm to installing you. it right now, by the way, with the like I don't know how many apps that are installing right now for <laughs> updates in preparation for tomorrow. I don't know how many things I've updated today. It's ridiculous. I, I, I that deluge of <laughs> everything that updated. I should open some of them and see how many of them look like iOS seven now. Um, Flipbook did update. Flipbook Face, did update. Foursquare updated this afternoon with mm-hmm. with new layouts. Like, um, I, I can't remember everything I updated today. I should now, just open random apps. I mean, I don't. I don't want to go, go down a whole app store conversation, but it'll be interesting to see. And I was reading some articles. Who's going to kill off their existing apps and build another version to make you pay for it again? Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of companies that are considering doing that. So we're we're thinking this is just going to be kind of the douchebag thing for them to do. Well, here's the question. So there, there's a lot of interesting things that come in with iOS 7, and this might be a good segue into the whole iOS 7 conversation. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of things that happen behind the scenes, and I'm not just talking from getting your app to look a lot more like the interface. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of components they've added into the SDK that's going to allow developers to really create better experiences, better Bluetooth connectivity, um so is this, is this related to there's a story i think it's here in the rundown um uh aj tweeted it over to i saw i was very excited about this because you know again you know i have the ipad one with the ios 5.0 so mm-hmm. i i i had that <clears throat> apps are going to start going away right mm-hmm. as they update you can't update them anymore you can't get them back uh they open it up that if you do have you know say a 3gs and ipad one that has the older versions you can download the last version that was compatible to your device. To your OS. To your OS. Which I think is even more important than just your device. So yeah. if, if you go back to an iPad, or if you go back to an iPhone Gen 1 or 3G, mm-hmm. before the 3GS, you exactly. Like one? You're right going right to so be able started, to start getting the back catalog. Yeah, so I started, pull, I started pulling it up, and I, well, one, uh, Pandora started working again on here. It didn't before. Mm-hmm. So something something's happened there, and, and, and then <laughs> it thought it was t- the year 2000, so I wouldn't <laughs> uh, connect to the App Store. But it is. I, I can get in here now, and I'm trying to think of uh, something that, uh, well, well like, now I also got to think, cause I, I went to try to get my teleprompter remote software, because I'd like to have this as a control, and I tried downloading it and said it, it requires, like, 5.0 or something but i think the app was new enough it hasn't been a long this is right. ios 3 right we j- we're coming out with 7 tomorrow this is ios 3 <laughs> but uh, it i think it's an important thing i mean there's going to be users that have devices that they can hand down mm. to family members or whomever um that the devices are still going to be usable and and and, and apple you know, Apple's policy seems to be tough luck in the past, but now it's, well, but the the thing is, like, it, this is an infrastructure thing they had to do. And I, or are they expecting that much of people that may not want to go to 7 because it's so different and they're preparing for that potential black backlash? I think there's an infrastructure thing that they had to do for iOS or for the 5 S mm-hmm. as far as the 64 bit 32 bit issue. So right now, and I think they announced it earlier this week or last week, um, developers, if you want to push out your 64 bit app, they're, they're, they're approaching developers and they're really trying to push them forward for 60 bit, 64 bit apps. I think that's going to lead to better battery life and some additional feature functionality down the road. Um, and you're going to have to compile a 32 bit version of the app. So now the App Store has to be able to tell not just what operating system you're running, but what flavor of the operating system and what processor you're on. So if you're already developing this way for the App Store to to deploy different apps across different devices, and you, you know that you already have the back catalog of all of the apps that came out based on what OS they were compiled for, Mm-hmm. You you now have this the, an innate capability to just give a back catalog to old operating systems. I think it's oh we had to create this oh and oh by the way it works for this so now we can let people pick up their old devices. Does that does that open up the like having these old devices for other applications? Do you think there's going to be a surge of people 
re you know turning these things back on um if the developer is willing to compile the application for an older operating system mm -hmm. and their op their application doesn't have specific api calls that are part of newer sdks are you going to go back all the way to ios 3 yeah probably yeah. which not. is kind of what i'm looking at here as, as a bit of the issue right um now here's here's the interesting thing that's happening for me right now so I, I'm going through, and I, I I was like, okay, maybe it's just stuff that was never wasn't re was released far after this came out with iOS three. Uh, but I went, I just looked up Twitter, Facebook, and it doesn't seem to happen on this version. Uh, I guess it's more of an iOS five six ish. I'm guessing it's five and six. Cause, so don't forget Facebook completely rewrote re it. Re so they don't even from the have the archive, archive in there. So I'm guessing, yeah, you're probably, probably the same with they, it. Probably can't connect. So if you re if they rewrote the well no no, no no this is this is in the store the store is delivering the message right, right now on this thing so or or you know at least it won't uh i, I don't know I, I guess i'll have to play with it a little bit more and see what happens oh man i still have google maps on here <laughs> and you can that that's that. a pretty easy device to jailbreak and yeah. i think you can get four dot x on there dude i loaded linux on this thing once <laughs> or not linux android i loaded android on this thing so how to run uh, I, I did not understand Android at the time, and it's only got one button. So you know, imagine how that went. <laughs> I like try it now that they put a little bit more time. Like half the drivers didn't work, didn't have a camera, stuff like that. Uh, it was the stuff you expect when you when you do something like that. Uh, it keeps wanting to remute itself, and the switch has been in the same place the whole time. So that's fun. Um, I, I know somebody. Was it, remember uh, Sanger? He had one of these until like last year. I had to, I kept that device around for a long time. But I mean, that was his daily phone. I, no, I I mean I I wrote out that device because don't forget I was on T-Mobile. Mm -hmm. So for me to have it's such a pain in the butt because you have to pay for it and you have to jailbreak it and everything. Right? right that that but that was easy to jailbreak and I couldn't get to three G speeds anyway. I was mm -hmm. stuck back on the edge network. So it's kind of like. Well, really, what's the point of me upgrading to the three G, three GS, and forward? Until until the three GS came out, and I even got that. I think a year, mm -hmm. nine months after it was released. So you're in kind of a weird kind of flow <clears throat> of your phones there. So, but now now I went within six months. I went two G, three G, three GS, and then <laughs> I think six months after that, I went four lawn no I, I got four three months after launch i got the 4s at launch i got the five at launch and i'll have the See, five they, didn't, at they didn't have they didn't have uh, uh unlocked versions for a bit after right for a while there all right I mean, we want to get to the ios thing but first i want to talk about something uh we have coming up here um our friends at insert coin to begin.com uh they're doing a really cool thing extra life is going to be a 24 25 hour marathon of gaming they're going to do here uh to benefit stuff like child's play charities and everything like that uh so you can donate to that directly and then and they'll have information over there insert coin to begin.com but in the meantime friend of sorgatron media has been doing uh a lot of t-shirt designs a lot of dvd covers a lot of artwork here around around here he's actually uh, alex alex Carr over in long beach california who's been helping us out here. Uh, he, he does the shirt designs, like I mentioned, for our uh, great uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show t-shirt store over at uh, ProWrestlingTees.com. Uh, but he's got a shirt up here uh, at teespring.com slash ICTB. That's ICTB for Insert Coin to Begin. Uh, and it's this cool little uh, Pac-Man ghost. Uh, and it says, Peace out, son. I'm ghost. Uh, now, this is one of those things where they have to reserve 25 of them in order to get the mail. Proceeds are going to go towards the Extra Life uh, 2013 efforts with InsertCoinToBegin.com. So it's another way that you can donate, donate and, and you can kind of uh, show off, uh, you know, that you did. Uh, so that's a cool geek shirt right there. Mm -hmm. uh, I already have my order in. I want to help, you know, uh, let's let's get this thing out there. Everybody go get your shirt. Uh, again, Teespring, T-E-E. -T -E -E spring.com slash ictb and go support uh, a good cause and a fun thing and keep an eye around uh the beginning of november that first weekend in november is when i think it's the november 2nd uh is and they'll probably correct me in the chat room um is when they're going to do the actual marathon you'll see a lot of um uh, um 
a lot of uh, tweets and stuff around that as well. So go check that out and support our guys. And go check out InsertCoinToBegin.com. They've been doing a lot of fun stuff over there uh, with video games and on that side of geekery. So, and with that, let's uh, let's go ahead and check out uh, age, what AJ is bringing to us. So, like I said, he's been on iOS 7 for a while. Um, and he gives us a little bit of a review. It's a little bit longer, so we're going to let him go at it here. Uh, and, uh, and we're going to see, and you're, you've been on it too, Chilla. I've been on it. I've been on the phone since beta one. I held off on the iPad until beta it Sounds three. like it was a good idea. So we're going to hear AJ's <clears> thoughts, and we're going to weigh in and, and uh, see what are we expecting tomorrow, or, you know, if you already have this, what are you expecting? Uh, and, of course, you know, let us know what, what you think of the new iOS. I guess everybody's updating. Everybody's out there. Let's, let's, let's be honest, you know. So let's go check it out. Hey, guys. It's your old buddy, AJ. Um, just coming to you, bringing you a nice video here. Because uh, I wasn't able to make it to the show last week. Terribly sorry about that. But I figured I'd give you guys a nice little uh, preview of iOS 7. Now, Sorg mentioned uh, that I have access to iOS 7, and I do. Uh, I've had iOS 7 on my phone since uh, the day it was announced. I didn't hesitate. I didn't um, question it. I just did it. And so um, here it is. Uh, I have a number of uh, apps to update, apparently. Um, one of the new things with iOS 7, apps should update automatically if you were on Wi-Fi. If you were not on Wi-Fi, they will not automatically update. That's why it says 6, because I don't want to sign into my Wi-Fi. Um, it works really, really well. Uh, the early betas were a little rough, but they got better. Um, they, it's, it's basically been set. This is the uh, what they call the Gold Master Seed. It is a, um, it's the final version that they're going to come out with. It's uh, currently September seventeenth, so tomorrow uh, they will, will come out with it. Um, one of the neat things is the. Uh, how it accesses folders. So if you tap on a folder, it actually zooms into said folder. Uh, and then when you when you tap away from it, it zooms out. Uh, for the longest time, when you went into a folder on the dock, it didn't zoom into the dock. It just flashed and showed you the folder. Um, now it doesn't do that. The other thing that it does, let me give you a folder that has more things in it. So um, you can now uh, scroll and there is infinite scrolling, if I remember correctly, inside of the folder. So you can just shove a whole bunch of stuff in there. Uh, the only problem that I see with that is that the uh, icons that are actually in there, are they only show the very first screen. Anything else, and it doesn't. So if I go in here, and I go to the second screen, and I tap away from it, you see how it kind of went back. By the way, for audio listeners, I'm really sorry I'm giving kind of a uh, an overview demo here. Um, you can't really see the parallax. You can kind of see it uh, where the icons seem to kind of float above the background. You can't really see it. It's a really neat feature. Um, it's it's pretty good. Um, I, there, it, there is ways to, sh to shut it off. They're all under the accessibility menu. Um, so I recommend going into there. The other thing, Google Maps, or not Google Maps, Apple Maps. Sorry. Um, miles better. 100% better. I actually um, don't use Google Maps anymore. Uh, I'm, sometimes I use it for search, but for the most part I use... Apple Maps, and you can see that I have uh, quite the history of things in here. So, um, like, let me get directions here. Starting Route 2, 8207 Raymond Road, so east on Rocky Ridge Road, then turn left onto Brevard Road. So right now it is in day mode, and you can see uh, the the next turn and all that other stuff. If you turn it sideways, I actually have to, oh, I can show this off. Um, the, uh, let's see here, control center. So this is control center. 
You swipe up from the bottom, you have access to a flashlight, your clock, your calculator, and your camera. That is all outside of the lock screen. You can shut it off. You don't have to have it, but for the most part, you'll want it. It's very nice. This flashlight application seems really, really stupid until you go on the App Store and you see a thousand of them. They're all dead now because this button exists. Uh, music controls, brightness control, airplane mode, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, do not disturb mode, and uh, portrait, un or portrait locking. So we will turn that off. So I can show you this. And then uh, at the very bottom here is uh, AirDrop. So you'll be able to push files to each other via peer-to-peer Wi-Fi with uh, AirDrop. That's kind of cool. We'll send you south. And then, um, so here it is in uh, horizontal mode. And you can see that it's it, they've made it a lot better, a lot cleaner. Siri also, uh, along the line, grew up, got a better voice. Um, it's a... Let's see if I can show you this. So that's night mode, and it's switching to day mode. And if I can hold this over, there you go. Now it's in night mode. And the reason I'm holding my finger over there is the ambient light sensor. But if you're in the dark, it doesn't have all white. It is actually dark. So this is very bright when you're in your car. When you're in the dark, it swings down into night mode, so it's a dark gray background, white text, and it's a much lower light, so you can actually use it at night and not blind yourself in your car. It's a very good thing. Um, I wish that there was, uh, the only thing I wish is that if you swiped here, it would show you the next thing, but it doesn't. Um, it's not a big deal. I highly recommend... Um, Highly recommend updating day one. Don't hesitate. It's not so bad. Um, actually, I'll also show you this. So this is a text message that I got because I use a lot of data on my phone. New feature. If you swipe left in text messages, that little text there is the timestamp for that message. So if you let go, it goes away. If you swipe in, it's actually really, really nice, and it's a feature I've been begging for for a very long time. Um, so I've, I've, I've recorded. That's a, a pretty basic run-through of um, iOS 7. Highly recommend updating. It's not as bad as you think it is. Um, it takes, like, maybe a day to get used to. Um, everything's still where it used to be. They haven't really moved anything around. It just looks a little different. Um, so highly recommend going out and getting it. Thanks, guys. And, and, and that's one of the things I think that's really important that he says and, and I wanted to bring up. That that control center where you have flashlight and you have your camera and you have um, music controls and you can turn on and off airplane, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, mm -hmm. um, do not disturb, rotation Which is a lock. very uh, uh, Android catch-up kind of feature, mm -hmm. I believe. You know, They didn't remove all of those pieces from settings if you're old school and you don't even know that exists you won't even notice you won't even notice it's when you accidentally do that which there's no function for that now now mm -hmm. isn't there i didn't i hear something about like the top down is different now the top down is a little different so you now, have now you you have you do have it over there so mm -hmm. um you have you have the t like you have a today all missed and it's notifications mm -hmm. you can't get me on wirecast can you uh, i don't think I, i'll try again no problem no big deal. Um, so you have your day at a glance. So I have cur current weather forecast, my calendar. Obviously, I, I come into Sorks for Awesome Cast. Um, stocks, um, stuff that's coming up tomorrow. Um, I have all because, uh, notifications. I was hearing that there is a bit of a Google Now type thing happening there. It's not as I wouldn't say it's Google now because like, I I haven't gotten like a you're at the T station your T is going to be there in okay. three minutes your uh, commute home wait is you get that from Google now that's right you were talking about yeah. that a few weeks ago weren't you I that's do get that amazing now I get that even on my iPhone I open yeah. up the Google oh, app yeah, and boom course. now it's there um, so missed notifications um, all notifications today screen it's everything that's going on and then if I scroll to the bottom I have tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Um, I have no event scheduled and on my alarm set for 6.50 a.m. Um, 
They still obviously have a partnership with Yahoo because weather and stock information is provided by Yahoo. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I mean, I mean, everything is to, to AJ's point. Everything's still in the same place. Yeah. If you can't. It's not. A, it shouldn't be a huge ordeal to a user that doesn't know what's going on. The the color. If you if you're worried about the bright, flashy colors. It actually adopts from the background on your device. So you noticed AJ's example, most of his most of his interface was dark. Well, it's dark because his background, mm-hmm. his wallpaper is dark. So boom, you got a dark. You're back to a dark device. Yeah, some of the new icons for Game Center or Photos are a little more colorful, but uh, whatever. I don't, I, I don't view that that is that big of a deal. Um, Parallax, the three-dimensional look, um, is only available on the 5S, 5, and 4S. It's not available on the 4. Mm. Um, can't, it can be disabled, as AJ was talking about, in the accessibility section. The one thing I am hearing from from users that I've shown this to, um, be it they're, they're not the, the younger people that I know, they are complaining about the zoom effect. When going in and out what? of folders, it's, so what is this it zoom makes effect? them sick. I don't, I don't makes understand. Makes them sick, it. really? So when I when I tap a folder, you're used to okay how, how it comes out it, and everything just kind of splooshes yeah. out. That Which, effect, isn't that the same thing that happens? Hold on, like I have a Mac here. That's the same thing that we have, but I guess this is something that they probably don't see too often. I don't have any of my buttons enabled, but like uh, launch like this. launch launch pad like that. Yeah, like that. Now, Launchpad isn't a window. No. So no, your no. folders come up as kind of a but window. But whenever you would do, um, uh, yeah, I don't have them activated here. Uh, but whenever you would do the hit F3. F3? That's not it. No. I, got, I think they're disabled on this one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, but whenever you did a control panel, I guess, it, mm-hmm. is, it, it does that kind of thing. And on so, a bigger screen. Holy crap. But I think the point is, is when you see that on the Mac, it's usually the whole screen. Mm-hmm. You don't have things stationary around the edges That's with true. one it comes area. Out of nowhere. It's not this big thing. Going right. On. So I think that's where some people are a little, I don't know, it makes that's their weird. stomach upset. Like uh, riding a roller coaster. I don't know what to tell you. So, so now mm. your phone makes you motion sick. Yeah. So that's the thing now. Um, I will say better battery life. You really? I, okay, so well, here, and I'm going to caveat that. Better battery life on the 5. Same battery life on the 4S. From what I've seen personally, and that's keeping in mind I have for two hours a day, I have a Bluetooth. I have Bluetooth headphones paired to this for my commute. Or probably more like an hour and 15 minutes. but And then I have my Pebble tethered all day long. Okay. And I'm getting pretty darn good battery life. It's not bad. For having Bluetooth devices. It's not bad. And I think one of the things that AJ's talking about maps, I think you're going to see some of the eye beacons and some additional feature functionality really make that maps app pop. It's going to know when you're home. It's going to know when you're at Starbucks. This is the thing. So so this is the thing that's exciting because this has been the conversation a lot over the weekend is this iBeacons. Mm-hmm. Can you ex- explain what are uh, – now, iBeacons is built into the OS, right? There's an API in There's the an OS. API Any developer the OS. can leverage it. Uh, so you upgrade it here with iOS 7. You have it. As long as you're on a 4S. At least. Because um, it requires Bluetooth – Four. Okay, the, the, the ver- okay. So and then that came out with the S, the four S. So what is iBeacons? Is there anything I can look up? Is there like I, I bet you if you just do lowercase i and then beacons, it's gonna get, and then just type in I don't know iOS. Um, mm-hmm. It's probably gonna give you some some developer type Which, stuff. And this is not something they talked about in the keynote. And this is where I think they really because they had so much to cover. They really had to rush that keynote. I mm-hmm. think they would have. I think they. I think they'd be good to go to the Google model. You know what? Get up there, talk about it, and and if it takes three hours, it takes three hours. Yeah. Especially in in that with this where they didn't they didn't live. It wasn't All right, live. So casting. it was there, but the problem is nobody's it's, it's doing right. anything to apply to it because there it is right there, yep. circled. 
when they with the, when they say and we got a bunch of API and we got a bunch of, in the SDK and all that kind of stuff. So the stuff that the user doesn't care about, but they will care when it starts I, getting. I can't used. read that screen. Does it? Does it? That have the Bluetooth um, Bluetooth notification? I don't know. There's so much. So there, there's stuff a lot of here. stuff. There's a, there's a lot of stuff. UI dynamics, inter app audio, <laughs> Sprite Kit, directions API, custom video compositors, automatic configuration. Barcode scanning, really? Yeah, <laughs> is is in there as an API? Well, it, what, now think about data it. protection by default. If you if you put that in there, and Walmart decides that they're going to do their whole inventory system off of a, of an iDevice, now they can build it right into their app. That you don't have to have a piece of hardware attached to it to take the barcode to do anything extra. Mm-hmm. You just write mm-hmm. it all into your app. So so iBeacons is going to allow you to figure it can figure out proximity. It, to an actual piece of hardware, which is an iBeacon. Mm-hmm. The iBeacon hardware can then do small tasks and interact with an application. So if Starbucks put an iBeacon on their front counter, mm-hmm. they could actually say, and obviously you would have to allow your device to do this, launch the Starbucks app and prompt the user for what drink they want while they're in line. Mm-hmm. Now I'm... 20 people back in Starbucks in the line. No one's come. I mean, my order isn't even up yet. They could actually queue everybody in line, or they could have an express line. I, if, you, if you're like walking out... Chipotle out, has when I load the app. Yeah. That never works. Oh. Well, they, the first time we tried it, it was like, it's not available at this location, and uh, it's always like, all right, we're going there. So people, pe- people are going to have to retrofit or to really expand the... the their app and put hardware in. Mm-hmm. I think this is Apple's run at NFC. It, it, that's and that's that's pretty much the discussion. Is like, hey, we got something better than NFC. We right. got this, right? Um, but I mean, is this something that's standardized? That like, if this iBeacons takes off, you can put it in an Android phone as a as a as a phone developer. You could put a piece of hardware. Well, you could put. Uh, see, I don't know how they're gonna do that. I don't know how you could leverage something in the iOS SDK or Xcode SDK software mm-hmm. development kit. This is a problem because you have NFC lets. doing what it's doing. You have iBeacons doing what it's doing with locations and everything. At some point, I mean, they have to converge. Do at some no, point. Uh, and I and I, I'll the only parallel I can draw is. Um, wireless video um things like airplay yeah look that th- th- there is no standard i i'm gonna guess there's not gonna be a well, standard. well there's for, dial <laughs> well there's so you have airplay you have mirrorcast you have dnla you have samsung's all share you i mean Ugh. you have you have a plethora of protocols that no one is standardizing on mm-hmm. and if and now you're seeing where my Yamaha receiver can do AirPlay and potentially Samsung Mirrorcast, and it has a USB port on it. You're probably going to see TVs. You find the thing that works for you. Say, okay, I bought all Apple devices, so I'm good to go, right? Right. Uh, I bought all Google, Chrome, and whatever devices, so I'm good to go, right? I bought all Samsung devices. So now you just have these kind of linear things. But that doesn't work when... When uh, all the McDonald's have iBeacons and all the Burger Kings have NFC. That is correct. So does that mean because I have an iPhone, I'm going to be more prone to go to McDonald's because they have the thing that's the cool feature, you know, or I go to Burger King because I have an Android phone that has NFC and I can do my Google wallet. But did you did, did Chipotle not having the order ahead stop you from going to Chipotle? Because I was going anywhere. I was like, right. oh, they have order ahead. Maybe I should try that. And it didn't work. Now, earlier today, when Pizza Hut's uh, pizza delivery or pizza online ordering was down for the location, I ordered it from Papa John's, as you can see. So, mm-hmm. and that's, you know, and that's something I want to streamline more. Because when I'm doing the show, and I'm like, well, I got to make sure I got food for my guests. And I order it, and I time, I time delay it. So it's right at the right awesome. time when people come in and I order it online. I don't have to try to explain the whole situation to somebody on the phone, you know, which I feel bad because then I don't order the local places because of that. But still, you know, mm-hmm. um, but the, I mean, I'm sorry for a for a local for a local place. Go out to uh, Renacoder, Reticoder, um, go out to any of those those websites that allow you to put out a bid for what you want done. 
and I'm sure you can get Johnny so, Johnny in his basement, 17 years old, more than willing to work and make create you an online ordering site for your there you go. for your for your local pizza shop. Well, no, the, the Grubhub, Grubhub at that point because Grubhub does um, uh, the Mario's Pizza over on Green Tree and a bunch of other like smaller places that mm-hmm. normally wouldn't have it. So, so yeah. I'm, it can definitely be done. Yeah, uh, but I mean, but still, mm-hmm. anyways, that, that is a whole other side mm-hmm. thing. So the side beacons, I like this idea of the side beacons. I mean, th- this conversation this weekend was was on a lot of the shows I've been listening to is about this personal cloud idea. You're seeing, you have the Pebble Watch. I got the Google Glass when it's not on its way back to Google. Um, my wife's walking around with a Fitbit. We're I'm, we're going to have these iPhone 4 or 5Ss that are pretty much like Fitbits in our pocket. I actually just installed an app that they were uh, talked about on Mac Break today uh, called uh, Move, I believe it is. Uh, yeah, Moves, actually. Uh, it's a picture of like an iPhone in a pocket, right? And I, I haven't really done much with this. And actually, it's been sitting here. Um, but it tells me where I am, what activity I'm doing based on what movement and it, it estimates. I've done 40 steps just running around here, apparently, since I've had this uh, earlier today. So, uh, like, this whole, and this will feed back, hey, this is what you've been doing for the last three days, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, this idea that we have these gadgets on our wrists and here and in our pocket on our faces that are, are, are telling us about ourselves and where we're at and what we're doing to better serve us now what i think for people that are big into that i think the 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 new device the the 5s is going to push people to that device only because they're going to get better battery life on that device um you're, you're talking about because how, they have the m7 processor yeah. the, the mobility yeah because i mean it, it, you didn't you don't need that new phone for these these things to work right you need that new phone for things to work these work to work and not affect your battery so, um, well, and now I don't know, can they, so they have an accelerometer. Do they have the extended capability? I don't know. Right. To, to detect minor, minor, minor movement. Right. Right. I, it I looks like they've know. refined the accelerometer, gyroscope, whatever it is. You're, you're seeing the M7. You're seeing, you're seeing the iBeacons. There's a, there's a Bluetooth stack edition for, um, wireless controllers so now gaming i think they're really going to push that in the ipad preview yeah. Yeah. um there's also an additional bluetooth stack i want to say for notifications mm-hmm. so things like the pebble pebble is now going to be able to take and actually push full-fledged notifications to the device where you're kind of limited on the on the iphone side there's now a portion of bluetooth that's going to be dedicated to sending and communicating messages from device to device, so I think that's gonna that's really gonna bring them on par, and they're gonna they're gonna keep in with that secure, keeping the apps containerized, keeping everything secure, giving the user the option to opt in to pass that data. Because the one weird thing that I'm seeing in iOS seven, um, they've taken another step towards um, authorization. So now, I, I don't know if you remember with 6, a lot of things started prompting you. Do you want to allow this? They used to say, do you want to allow access to the photos? Mm-hmm. And if you, allowed a, if you allowed an app access to your photos, it inherently gave access to contacts as mm-hmm. having access to photos back in iOS 5. Yeah. In 6, they broke that out and you had photos and contacts. Yeah. One of the things you now have is microphone. Do you want this app to be allowed to access your microphone? So that really talks about... And is our microphone getting turned on with our, on our knowledge? Right. And the, and one of the things that AJ talked about with Siri, you know, got a new voice and, and she's starting to grow up. If you've noticed over the last, I want to say, three to five days, the word beta associated with Siri has been removed from everywhere on the Apple website. Oh. Up until, I want to say, like, it was either over the weekend or maybe even yesterday or maybe it was Friday um, all of the pages that had on Apple's website that, that anywhere where Siri was listed, it was listed as a beta application. Mm-hmm. It, 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 it's been ripped off everywhere. It has been. I don't see it anywhere. It's under, well, it's under iOS it, it, where, when you look it up. This, um, this used to have like beta all over it. And really? obviously you now have new screen captures uh, anywhere in there. Where it's, it, I think they're saying that they're ready to start pushing Siri capabilities, which is funny. So they've, and, and, but they, but they have been. 
haven't they? I mean, they, we've had commercials about Siri uh, uh, this whole time. You've, had, you've st- had commercials, but I think I think it was to push you to start getting to use it. Yeah. And I think they, they realized they had two issues. Mm-hmm. Um, not as many devices had it. It only came with the 4S. Now you have it on the 5. Now you're going to have it on all the devices that are being sold. Now if you get an Apple device, you are talking to it. Not only that, but she's had time... And I mean, if you if you're familiar with the IBM Watson project, things like that, uh, not necessarily artificial intelligence, but Watson learns as it goes. Mm. Um, that, she's had time to learn as people have interacted with her. self aware. I don't think she's self aware, <laughs> but I think they've they've gotten to the point, and I think they made it gimmicky to get you to start using it. Mm-hmm. They, I mean, Siri came out and you know, opened the pod bay doors, like all these crazy things that you could tell her and she would give you snarky remarks. I I really think that was a gimmick to get you into continually using this goes her. back to my they they humanized it, mm-hmm. you know, for one thing. I've been using reminders more. I love reminders. I, 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 location based reminders it. are my favorite. I haven't done so much the location stuff. Um but I've been using it more for like, oh hey, I need to remember to do this in a couple hours. It's easier to, and, and I love the idea that I pulled up, start talking to it. And the, the, the whole idea that it is like a personal assistant. Mm-hmm. Now I would like to get it more interface and that went into like, remember the milk, something more robust. So but, that's where I think, so that's where I think in the next, in iOS 7.1. There, there is, there is an interface with it, but I don't think I figured it out completely. And I don't think I reattached it right when I reloaded this phone, to be honest. If you want, Right, but I think what you're going to see now that Siri's grown up, she's going to get APIs, and anybody mm-hmm. is going to be able to tie into the Siri API. So I think I think in a seven point one release, you're going to see uh, uh, app developers be able to actually leverage Siri to control. Okay, the app. Siri, uh, mm-hmm. let's play the uh, Treasure Yeti level on Plants vs Zombies two. Or Siri, um, add add to remember. What is it to remember the milk? Mm-hmm. Add blah blah blah. Remember the milk to this list. Add this to my Google Calendar, and right. not just my calendar calendar. Right. You know, which I tried to turn all those off because I realized I was getting weird. I was putting stuff on the wrong damn calendar. Mm-hmm. Um, in seven, you can set the default calendar. I don't know if you can do that in six. Okay. So if you sync a Google Calendar and. Your primary Google Calendar is not the calendar that you want default reminders to go into. You can set the default calendar for new entries. Ooh, that's nice. So if you use a shared calendar like I do, mm-hmm. Carla and I use a shared calendar. Nine times out of ten, I'm going into that, not into a different calendar. So Yeah. All right, so let's touch on some of this. Now, here's something. Uh, speaking of personal cloud, you said no need for a tether plan for Google Glass. What mm-hmm. is this for the plan? So they have, and you're probably a little more familiar with this than I am, obviously, A, as a Google Glass owner, and B, having the um, Nexus 7 Mm -hmm. um, with the app. They are adding into that that app um, where you do not need a tethering plan. Mm. So, and I'm guessing that if you click on the link in the upper left-hand corner, it shows you that you're glass tethered or whatever they're going to call yeah, it. Yeah, it's that little kind of uh, that, uh, yeah. pyramid-y thing that they do for glass. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's it's creating its own. The device is creating a connection to glass. Mm-hmm. So I, I think this is interesting, and it'll be interesting to see based on market penetration what happens with this. Mm-hmm. So everyone said when. And then, and you're going to laugh, um, the BlackBerry Playbook came out. BlackBerry Playbook used a bridge connection back to a BlackBerry. Yeah. That was yeah. tethering. Yeah, I remember tethered that. Tethered through an app. I remember that. And the carriers said, you know, we're going to let them go for now and see what happens. Mm-hmm. Wow, the Playbook yeah, never flopped. caught. It flopped. So there was no need for pushback from the carriers to push back on BlackBerry to say you got to get rid of this app and you have to. People are gonna have to pay for a tethering plan. Mm-hmm. Now I have two theories behind this. A, maybe they'll come out with some kind of agreement with the carriers that you know 
we're giving you devices, we're giving you OSs, you're going to have to help us out with this. If someone has glass, they don't have to pay tethering. We're doing enhanced encryption, or not encryption, um, compression, don't worry about bandwidth, or we'll do some kind of crazy reimbursement mm -hmm. of bandwidth through this app. We'll calculate and we'll pay you back, which is an interesting thing that you're going to see coming out from um, app developers. So some of the things that you're going to see on the Google and iOS side, app developers are going to be able to prepay for bandwidth for applications so they don't go against your cap. So an, as an advertisement, hey, try our app free for 30 days. Oh, and by the way, it's some great and wonderful. Say, say it's the new Netflix and it's all high def. Yeah. They're going to be able to say to the carrier, we're going to pay for this app's bandwidth and let them use it for free for X amount of days. So now you can try an app for free up front and not have to worry about it going against your bandwidth. And then if you decide you want to pay for it, then you actually have to put forethought into, oh, my God, how much am I going to use this? So, but I, I could see Google, maybe Google's going to do some kind of reverse reimbursement or where I really see this tying in, Loon everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> the app connects back through the device, connects to Loon, and the glass is paired through the device. For those that don't know, Loon is the uh, Google X project where they're going uh, to suspend internet from balloons in the stratosphere to put internet everywhere, mm -hmm. basically. So if your device connects back to a loon, which I'm guessing the antenna on a phone and or um, tablet is probably better than the antenna in your Google Glass. I don't know about that. Um, well, it would be interesting. Just look at the bars and walk. start walking away from your house. And see, see I what don't have any bars. You, have. you don't really get bars when you're connected on glass. Oh, you can't see signal strength. Not really. I like when you first hook up, I think, but that's it. Uh, like when you go into the network settings and see what networks are out there. But other than that, I don't think you can just like actively see it. So unless you crash it and then you see that little Android bar at the top <laughs> and you're like, I'm not supposed to see that crap. Uh, you know, that, that happens sometimes too. Um, anyways, all right. Uh, you know, speaking of bandwidth caps, um, did you see the Netflix thing that's happening that I didn't put a title to? I apologize for that. Is this where they're monitoring piracy? They're, they're monitoring piracy. So this was in, I believe, the Netherlands. And I, I completely copy and pasted the wrong article. I apologize. But in the Netherlands, they, uh, Netflix there was looking at piracy to see what was hot on the piracy and they bought on the pirate i didn't use that right did i no you're right I so they they looked at to see what people were, were pirating and watching yes. to make decisions on what they would buy in in this case then apparently offer on Netflix. prison break is really really popular on the piracy sites uh so they went and made sure they bought it up because they figured well if they're pirating they're going to the trouble and if we get it, we're easier. And that whole idea that like making it easier to watch TV versus piracy is is the right idea, you know. And th th there was a snide remark in the article I saw where I think Netflix actually said, "And, and we'd love to help out HBO with their Game of Thrones problem too." <laughs> uh, so yeah. I think uh, HBO is going to help themselves out in the long run with their with their Game of Thrones. Oh, they problem, are. They're but... doing fine. HBO is making enough money to justify that series. And I think they realize, obviously they realize, there's people in the company that realize, like, that, you know, that there's people that mistakenly probably shouldn't have, but said that that was an honor that they're one of the most pirated shows. It'll be, so here's here's going to be my take on this. And and I'm not a huge sports fan, you know that. Mm -hmm. um, whoever gets NFL Sunday ticket next year, because mm -hmm. it's up for bid, whoever gets that, if it's a tech company... I think you're going to see a huge change in how media is distributed. With that, with that, you just murdered the uh, local affiliates. Mm -hmm. I think. Well, I think you're going to see Microsoft really chomping at the bit to pick that up. What would They've already. I mean, I mean, I was going to say if you get Sunday tickets, Sunday ticket is already already a very exclusive thing. Not everybody can get Sunday ticket, right? Because you have to have DirecTV. Right. 
Now they do that online component. Supposedly, if you can't get DirecTV and prove it, you can get the online version of it. Uh, as we talked about with the Madden uh, thing, where you could get a free DirecTV if you paid for the $100 holy crap version of, of Madden 25. Um, so I guess it really isn't too much out of the idea that if Microsoft picks it up and now I can only get DirecTV on Xbox, or I can only get um, Sunday Ticket on Xbox. Well, so I've heard two companies that are really pushing for Sunday Ticket. Uh, which, Google. Google. And Microsoft. I didn't hear about the Microsoft yet. So, But it makes sense considering they're already putting ads out about the NFL on Xbox linkage One. on Xbox One, which is very interesting, which I think is going to be right out of the gate very, very hot for them. Mm, I agree. Like especially I, since they're releasing smack in the middle of the NFL season. Mm -hmm. What well, it, It'll be interesting to see. I, will, will you see, and I, and I, like I said, I'm not a big sports person. I know. I think we're probably in uh, yesterday was the second game. game. Week two started yesterday for, for the NFL season. Yes. I know Microsoft has really tried to push use, usage of their devices in the NFL. I don't know if they've showed the sidelines. Has the Surface tablet shown up? Oh, really? Um, I know they've really, uh, where certain teams in the NFL have said, you know, we use our iPads for our playbook and we use as a, all this kind of technology. I think Microsoft's really trying to push in there. So it'll be interesting to see. But I go back to the original statement of if a tech company get Sunday ticket next year, I think you're going to see all of the media distribution channels scurry and scamper because I think what you're going to see is companies like HBO are then going to say, you know what? I don't need your advertising anymore. I'm pushing go. So it's one anybody of those, who wants if it. If they don't need it, we don't need it. Right. I, I, I think and, I, and I think the I NFL that. is strong enough to survive on its own. Mm -hmm. And now these where I, there was just I can't remember who it was. It was a Time Warner that was arguing with ABC or NBC? The, the latest one was Time Warner and CBS. CBS mm -hmm. and CBS knew that if they waited it out until NFL season started, Time mm -hmm. Warner was going to have to cave. Now, no. Think about it. If Sunday tickets available, and let's just say this: What happens if they make it available via an app on every Windows Eight device and the Xbox One? Mm -hmm. a, a, a large majority of everyone will be able to. And if you go back to Kevin Spacey's comment, is it is it no longer a TV show because you're not watching it on TV? Is it no longer a movie because you're not watching it at the theater? Is it is it no longer a, a sports game because you're not a sporting event because you're not watching it on your TV or you're not present at the event itself? Mm -hmm. Now I can take it on my tablet. I can take it wherever I want. So I think that's going to be huge for for media. Awesome next year. I wanted to touch on real quick. I have I've spent a little bit more time with the Chromecast. I talked about it a little bit last week. I actually wrote a blog about it. Mm -hmm. But my first big evening with it, I like it. I like the ability to be able to use it. You know, I like that in in this case, we I, it's so easy to instead of, and, and this is like really just kind of a preference kind of thing, I guess. But I typically it's my Xbox, right, that we're watching mm -hmm. most of our TV on in the living room. Uh, I have the that old Roku in uh, in in the in the office, but to go into the living room turn on the TV and it's you left on that channel for Comcast anyways I don't even look for the remote or anything and it says ready to cast I pull up my phone whatever it takes to load up Netflix which on the 4s still respectable mm -hmm. I say uh, hit play hit that Chromecast button it starts loading I mean I think I'm watching television in under a minute at this point you that's, know that's that's versus perfect. you know the, the, it is it's so when it's it's when it's set up and going and good, and I have my remote, it's in my pocket anyways. Now, you're, you subscribe to multiple, so you're a cord cutter. Mm -hmm. So you subscribe to multiple streams, streaming services. Yes. So you have Netflix, you have, do you have Hulu Plus? Hulu Plus, I have, uh, you have Amazon, Amazon Prime, Prime, Prime and even access to uh, HBO Go. Okay. So in that realm, right now you're tied to or Netflix you do in YouTube mm -hmm. on the Chromecast, which means I think about, oh, hey, what's on Netflix? Okay. Oh, wait, I really want to watch that burn notice we bought on Amazon Prime because it's a finale, so let's go boot up the Xbox. 
Okay. That's how the thinking goes now. When the fall season comes up here, which is this week, by the way, um, it's going to be because every time we sit down, I, because it, it's not just like if I'm in the living room, typically I'm sitting down with my wife. You know, uh, is why I don't get into a lot of video games. I don't want to take the TV, you know, when we're free for that. Uh, and it's, hey, what's on Hulu? It's like, and that's been the question all summer because that's the first thing we go because it's where the new thing is, mm-hmm. right? That's where the new episode of Bones just came up this morning on it, right? Hey, we're going to get new episodes of Grimm. We're going to get new episodes of, uh, geez, I don't even know, Arrow, you know, or I don't even know what else we're watching. Parks and Rec, I think, is what's left, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, uh, but that was that. And, I, and again, I keep going down to that. That list is getting smaller, of what those are. Mm-hmm. You know, now I'm looking at certain things like um, Walking Dead. I've always just kind of waited for the Netflix season. I'm going to wait for this season three to come out on Netflix, and then I'm going to go ahead and get the subscription on Amazon Prime so I'm caught up. See, I'm gonna have to look at Amazon's pricing because I get the I subscribe on. Apple iTunes. I subscribe on iTunes. Mm-hmm. It seems to make sense. And I, and I know a uh, big, big difference I see uh, because I, I purchased uh, Venture Brothers and Burn Notice. And I believe if you get a uh, – actually, no. I think you told me different, didn't you? Uh, iTunes, don't you have to buy a season pass all at one time? Like one chunk? I can buy – a la carte or i can i can buy one episode at a time or i can buy the season pass the season pass is cheaper of course in the long run but you still have to drop like oh, i gotta drop 30 bucks on this show or something like that right yep. with amazon with at least the season series i've tried so far um i i subscribe but what that does is it charges me each, each time the episode comes out at a discount which uh for both okay. series was under two bucks I think it's a dollar ninety nine. I ended up paying like dollar seventy nine or something like that for each episode. So I could swallow that. You know? Do they have additional content? Uh, yeah, they'll, they'll, okay. they'll, they'll have additional stuff. I know I've noticed with Doctor Who, or they'll have show previews. I'm already subscribed to to Agents of Shield. I went ahead and subscribed for it because I'm like, well, I'm always I'm going to forget when it comes out. So I have it. I'll get that email and we'll go watch it. Why aren't you using like the ABC app or the? any of those apps because i can't put it on my tv yo you don't have Apple yes TV. there are options yes i could have waited and i'd still be waiting on hulu to put up episodes of burn notice that i can't watch on hulu plus and then i could use now chromecast to push that to my tv but really i am to this phase in my life with technology with everything i'm going to pay for the convenience i'm tired of working around crap Okay. If there's an option where it's like, well, it's two bucks for me to do it versus I got to do all this stuff. And then this takes away from the enjoyment of just sitting down and watching and vetching out and just enjoying the show. Then I'm going to go do this thing that, that costs money. And I think it's reasonably priced enough at this but point. It's worth it. You know, um, I'm not at a point where I'm hurting for money, mm-hmm. you know. So I'm like, yeah, I'll do that. You know, it's like I still add up. I still add up what I'm paying for four services. And what I pay for those, and it's still not what I was paying for cable. Right, and that's that's why I'm and more that's than to and pay that's why I go on to. Now I get to a point where I spend 150 bucks a month on Amazon Prime. We got a problem, and I need to work on that. Uh, <laughs> you don't have that many hours in the day to no, be I wouldn't consume that much. I TV. wouldn't. It, we th- I was talking with AJ last night. Like the majority of stuff I am consuming is podcasts on this thing, you know, on the phone or on the, on the website, it's Stitcher. I, I burn through so much stuff on Stitcher. Uh, that I like, kind of like, man, I really need to consume some more TV, you know? Uh, like, because that's that, that's what got me into Arrow was the fact. It was, so I don't have Hulu Plus, mm-hmm. um, the CW app. Mm-hmm. So there's a CW app on Xbox. There's a CW app on my tablet. There's a CW app everywhere. Yeah, but what I happens? Can, and CBS has a lot of shows on their site too. But what happens after a couple of weeks when you just are too busy and can't get to that episode of How I Met Your Mother? They drop. They drop so many episodes they, back drop like three episodes back and i'm like well Man. crap i guess i gotta buy it on amazon prime now i have this one random episode on amazon <laughs> prime that's what happened to us watching burn notice on that whole delay thing we waited like a week too long we had to go buy three episodes of burn notice because we just got too busy over the holidays or something or everything okay. else going on and and you're just like well i'm just gonna pay for my mistake you know and mm-hmm. go ahead and purchase it we still haven't finished chuck because that happened i wonder if they'll ever get to the point where someone like amazon prime will do some kind of premium so you pay for prime so premium prime premium prime 
it's, I like it's that. app i like that like 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 the tier it like prime is what you get now which is like really kind of low level shows they have some good stuff in there that but cycles in and out kind of like netflix and then you get a premium prime <laughs> i love the name but it's like maybe we pay 20 bucks a month you know mm-hmm. but we get first run of like most of that other stuff yeah. You know, maybe maybe we do get all the maybe CBS finally makes a deal with somebody, you know, right. <laughs> or or something like that, you know. <clears throat> but a lot of stuff's happening like that under the dome, you know. Mm-hmm. So, well, that's where I wonder is if it in the movie industry, I'm seeing more talks about, you know, there's we're going to come out with our own app, and that, much like the Jarvis app that I showed today, there's a lot yeah. of there's a lot of movies that are doing that. So I'm wondering if. You're going to see that everyone talks about a unified second screen experience. I'm worried that's just going to be fragmented all over the place. It is because everybody wants their own solution. Yeah. How many apps are out there that do that? You know. But hopefully the TV industry figures out that the, 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 what they have today is not working and and they need to do something. But I don't know, but I, I like it. I, I, I really hope more apps keep coming out for it. Um, it's real super simple for what it does. So if you're like, I uh, sitting there again last Wednesday, just sitting there on my on the next seven and just zooming through, looking for the next thing to watch while I'm watching the uh, the video up there um, on, on YouTube is just really cool. I'm throwing up source feds, I'm throwing up other videos, I'm finding other random videos. We'll throw up what's the fox say, you know? Uh, it's just it, it's a really cool experience because the apps are very mature. This does the same mm-hmm. thing where you throw the, like the video down in the corner, and so you can keep perusing you know you can you, your second screen and, and, and i can back out of it that's the other thing i thought was cool and i described in the article um i was like you know i tested like okay i'm netflix and netflix becomes the interface it fills the entire screen with a picture of the weeds or batman beyond whatever i've been watching and a big controller and the information and the time left and everything like that you know stuff that's on on screen display if you're doing the xbox mm-hmm. is right there in your hand i i x'd out of it i i i killed the process for netflix and it's still playing i'm like okay now how do i control this what happens now right so i opened up netflix took a couple seconds but this big blue bar pops up at the top and say hey this is playing and especially if you hit play on something else and you already hit chromecast mm-hmm. on there it, it lets you know and you hit click it it goes back into your interface so it'd be interesting to see what happens if you have two people in a house with two different so you're on the net, same Netflix now, accounts, I two Chromecast. a little account. bit of that when I was testing the browser on the laptop. Um, it, it says, hey, um, I think it says this device is playing this mm-hmm. on Netflix. Are you sure you want to interrupt that? That's it. Oh, cool. So, okay. But if you had two Chromecasts, so one in each room, you could each. Well, it, it, it will pulls up. It says, do you want to play this on iPhone or living room? I, I just need okay. my Chromecast living room. So you would pick the device, which I think is very similar to AirPlay. Yeah. So, All right. We got to get out of here. We got to go talk video games with Let's Play. Awesome. Uh, after this here on the uh, Sorgatron Media Podcast Express. Uh, so... <laughs> Uh, if you have any questions, any, anything, anything, any comments or anything, hit us up on, at AwesomeCast on Twitter. Uh, hashtag AC167 uh, for this episode, too. Uh, anything you think we should be talking about for next episode or anything like that, let us know. I'm at Sorgatron on Twitter. He's at Chilla. That's me. We're here live dot com every Tuesday night at about 6 per, 6.30 p.m. Eastern. Thank you to our happening... Uh, uh, our happening? They're happening, man. They're happening. Uh, our awesome chat room that's been hopping all night here and people coming in and out. And, uh, uh, you know, and, and thank you. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. <laughs>